when I was around 12 years old, my buddy uh, got a nice bicycle and I wanted one just like it. Um, so I went to my dad and asked him for it. And I said, it's only $65, dad. Well, that was quite a bit of money in those days for my dad, by the way. So he said, I'm not gonna buy you a new bicycle. I'll help you get some jobs so you can earn the money. So I started meeting the widows that he'd represented when their husbands died who needed somebody to mow their lawn. They'd lost their lawnmower. <laughs> and they paid me between a dollar and two dollars and fifty cents to mow their lawns. And Hood River lawns, some of, most of them are kind of sloped. They all have manual push mowers. Uh, none of them had power mowers. But that was fine. I enjoyed it. And after I got to about uh, $35, somebody told me, hey, there's a used bike for sale for $35. And it was exactly the Schwinn Moto Bacon that I wanted. So I bought it and I was supremely happy with that bicycle. Then many years later, uh, and when I was about 61 or two years old uh, and newly assigned to the criminal division of the courts, a case came in front of me where the police had set up a sting. They'd gotten an expensive bicycle, leaned it up against the wall of a Safeway store and then sat back and watched. And when the defendant came along and couldn't resist, they snatched him and charged him with theft, one. And there was a minimum mandatory sentence for theft one in those days of five years in the penitentiary. Well, I looked at the, uh, hmm, $750 is the threshold. They brought a guy in uh, who testified that uh, uh, the, that bike was worth $900 because he was selling them in his shop for $900. And I said, well, the one that they used in the Sting, was that brand new or slightly used? Well, it's slightly used. Oh. Well, do you sell uh, used bicycles of that nature? No, only new ones. So they didn't really have uh, evidence pr pr produced to show that it was worth over $750, only that the new one was 900 So I said, well, I'm going to make a ruling that uh, uh, that bicycle uh, is probably marked down from $900, somewhere below $750. So we're gonna go for the misdemeanor and I'm gonna sentence this man, uh, who was blessed guilty by the way, I'm gonna sentence this man to uh, one year in the county jail, knowing that the jail's being so crowded that they cycle people out, he probably wouldn't have spent more than three months there, but he was gonna get some jail time. And part of what really caused my brain to come alive was his lawyer mentioned almost as an aside that his 14 year old son was sitting there in the courtroom and he was the sole means of support. The father was the sole means of support for that little boy. The DA, who was somebody that I'd been very helpful to in the past when she'd have a migraine headache on a court day, stormed out of the courtroom. I'll never come back here again. Well, when I went and got in the elevator to go to lunch, there was the elected DA. Mike Trunk, and he, he said, boy, did you ever cause some excitement in my office this morning? And I says, yeah, I'm not surprised, uh, but did they tell you that I did give the guy a year in the county jail? No, nobody mentioned that. And he laughed, and then later, when we'd see each other in the elevator, uh, he'd say, well, Jan, we need to go out shopping for a bicycle. And he and I would laugh, and life went on. But my experience as a 12 year old had informed me in a manner that helped me deliver some justice when I was in my 60s.